This is ABC 15 Mornings. Former President Bill Clinton waking up in the hospital. Routine checkup in the emergency department and they identified an infection of his blood. New details on his condition. Mixing vaccines. They may recommend a mixing and a matching strategy for J&J. We'll have to see what the panel really decide. The FDA could take a vote today. Only on ABC 15 Mornings. Having an experience, you know, not feeling wanted or loved by the only people that were supposed to love and care for you. A new device to help ease stress and anxiety. And a real life and death circus. Looking for something fun this weekend? We have a list of things to do. And there are a lot of things to do yes, this weekend. Well, absolutely. good morning and happy Friday to you. It is Friday, October the 15th. I'm Justin Pizera alongside Kaylee O'Kelly. And we do want to get you going here with this newest effort to tackle the bus driver shortage. So many families wondering what to do, especially with some of the delays both to and from school. Yeah, Peoria Unified just moving to increase their pay. Our Jamie Warren is live this morning following the decision from the governing board last night. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, guys. This has been an issue that has forced districts all across the valley to scramble. So last night, the Peoria School Board decided to raise the minimum wage from $13.99 to $17 an hour, and they are now hoping that that extra $3 is going to make all of the difference. Now we first told you last month about how the district was forced to cancel 10 bus routes because it didn't have enough drivers causing schedule changes for families and stress on current drivers. In order to retain and recruit drivers, the board voted unanimously last night to raise the minimum wage, but not before hearing from parents, staff members, and even bus drivers about what would happen if they didn't take action. We have reached a critical point where we may fail completely operationally. We average the loss of an employee weekly. I am pleading and begging to please approve this desperately needed wage increase for our CDL holders. And that woman who you just heard from said that she is a bus driver and head trainer for transportation in the district. The district says that $17 an hour will now put them in a much more competitive wage bracket and above many other Valley school districts. That increase is expected to go into effect for the fiscal year of 2022, which is already underway. And drivers who train new staff members will be paid an additional $1 an hour on top of that $17 an hour. So if you are looking for a job, you know someone who is, maybe this wage increase for bus drivers is an incentive for you to want to work for the Peoria Unified School District. They have all of their job postings right now on their website. We also have a link under this story at abc15.com. Justin and Kaylee. It's, it's great to hear that our educators and people who support the education are being taken care of, at least a little more so there on the west side of town. Yeah. Allison Rodriguez, she's here now with a check on your Friday forecast. Good morning, Allison. Good hey, to see you. Good morning, Justin and Kaylee. So good to see you guys as well. And everybody at home, I hope your morning is off to a good start. It's Friday, so that's got to mean something, right? Phoenix Sky Harbor, we're currently sitting at 60 degrees. Still kind of dark out there for most of the valley, but the sun is slowly starting to peek up. We're going to keep an eye on that sunrise here as we go in through the next couple of minutes here. Uh, but winds fairly light now. That's going to change as we go in through the late morning. Take a look what happens even starting right around eight o'clock this morning. Temperatures are going to I mean, excuse me, winds are going to start to kick up just below 10 miles an hour. We are expecting winds, breezy conditions 10 to 15 miles an hour as we get into the afternoon with our temperatures climbing into the 80s today. That's where we're going to get to as far as your temperatures are concerned. 85 for a daytime high today. Lots of sunshine too. It's going to be gorgeous out there, but I am tracking another warm up coming our way. Temperatures back in the 90s. So we're going to talk about those details coming up in just a little bit. But for now, I want to send things over to Noelani Graf, who's got an eye on our roads this morning. Hey, no, hey, what are you tracking? Hey, good morning, Allison. So we are starting to see the typical slowdown in that six o'clock hour. So if you plan on stopping for a hot drink, then give yourself some extra time. Wide view of the maps for the most part, we've got green. If you're in the East Valley, both of the 202s, the 60 and the 202 South Mountain moving along just fine. The I-10, however, we are starting to see that slowdown uh, from inbound traffic starting at around 67th Avenue. 
Avenue. Oh, now it just moved closer to the stack this morning. So that's good news. And you'll back up a little bit more as you head closer to the downtown area up on the I-17 this morning. Traffic has finally started to clear on the 17 northbound. We did have a crash earlier at Union Hills, and so I just want to give you a live view of that traffic camera. They have cleared it and the backup is done, but I'll give you another look at those desert drive times coming up in just a little bit. Well, five people are hurt after a fiery crash in Mesa. This after three cars collided near Signal Butte in Southern. You can see here our Cliff Castle Chopper over that scene here, and we do want to show you another vantage point. The aftermath from the ground. Police are saying that one of the cars actually went airborne and that another caught fire. An accidental shooting in Peoria has claimed the life of a teenager. Police say a group of friends were cleaning a gun inside an apartment near 83rd Avenue in Olive when the gun fired, hitting an 18 year old. He was taken to the hospital, but later died from his injuries. It is unclear if anyone will face any charges. Well, this morning, an FDA advisory panel set to meet about booster doses when it comes to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The group unanimously voted to recommend boosters for the Moderna vaccine. These will be given six months after the second dose, like Pfizer's booster. It also applies to the same groups, those 65 years of age and older, adults with underlying conditions, and those whose job may put them at a greater risk for exposure to the virus. What we're trying to do is bring your immunity up to the point when you were first vaccinated, and essentially these boosters will do that trick. And also on the agenda today for this panel, they're going to be looking at the effectiveness of mixing vaccines. In the meantime, the FDA says it will have outside experts and meet together on November 30th, all to look at Merck's pill, the one to treat COVID-19. It means the drug wouldn't be approved until the month of December at the earliest. Maricopa County is seeing a record number of West Nile virus cases. The Environmental Services Department tells us the number of mosquito related complaints are more than double what they were at this time last year, and they're receiving hundreds more complaints about green pools, which of course are perfect breeding grounds for mosquitoes. While continuing to support the family of a fallen MCSO deputy today, another uh, event is going to help the family of Deputy Juan Ruiz, MCSO, hosting this barbecue. It's a fundraiser in honor of the deputy who was killed in the line of duty this week. It's happening outside their headquarters from 10 a.m. until this evening at 6, and all proceeds will go to the Ruiz family. In 12 hours time for tip off game three of the WNBA finals and the series has now moved itself to Chicago. OK, so right now the series is tied one game apiece. Now the odd makers have Chicago as the favorite tonight. It's OK to go in as the underdog. Whatever. Less pressure. Game four is going to be on Sunday afternoon. And if there is a game five, that's going to be back here at home. It's going to be at the Footprint Center on Tuesday. It would be really cool if we could watch them win it all right there. I hope here so. at home. It, uh, yeah. Here we want it here in Phoenix. Yes, absolutely. OK, hey, you ever feel like someone's kind of watching you minus the kind of up next on ABC 15 mornings. It's a look at some new technology coming to Circle K gas stations across our state and pandemic pricing. It's gone. So a warning to all tenants. The cost of rent is going up again. And if you're looking for something to do this weekend, you might want to take a drive to Avondale for a great event celebrating its history. Also, if you've got a trip out of town, maybe headed to the airport. Here's a live view courtesy of live drive on the 143 this morning. It's not too bad out there. So far, so good on this Friday. Let's keep it rolling. I've got to look at those desert drive times on the other side of this break. 611 on a Friday morning. Let's catch you up on your top stories here and new for you set to appear in court. The man charged in the 2018 school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Nicholas Cruz facing more than 30 counts of murder and attempted murder. And there are reports that he may in fact plead guilty to the charges against him. A federal appeals court granting the request from the state of Texas to keep the state's new abortion law in place. That law bans abortions once a heartbeat is found, and this latest ruling pushes the case closer to returning to the Supreme Court. The Coast Guard now believes about 25,000 gallons of crude oil spilled in an offshore pipeline leak in Southern California from last week. Now, we can tell you this, it is actually about a fifth of what officials initially predicted. 
And the price of rent, we don't have to tell you, you know it's going up, not just here in Arizona, but everywhere. The latest consumer price index shows rent went up half a percent in September, and it's the biggest increase we've seen since 2001. So the experts say, while half a percent might not sound like much, rent is typically the largest monthly expense for families. A Circle K in Tempe is getting a high-tech upgrade. The gas station just adding a new frictionless checkout system. That's what they're calling it. Artificial intelligence powered cameras they are set up all around the store. So the system can detect products shoppers pick up and then they automatically record the purchases on the Circle K mobile app. So you don't have to go to the checkout to swipe your card. This technology will be coming to more Circle K's in Arizona in the coming weeks. So no, hey, it is now even easier to get your polar pop. Oh, that sounds good. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time. And you don't even have to deal with accident people. Law group. <laughs> is right? that what the that's, I mean, that friction, I think that's the friction they're talking about, yeah. so you don't have to, you know, get in an argument with anybody what, about that. What happens when you go in the Circle pop. K? <laughs> I'm not going. But you know going. what? Sometimes you just need to get in and get out, especially this morning because things are starting to back up. You don't have time to spare, so let's talk about it. Right now, the I-10, the traffic has cleared a little bit. We're actually going around 60 miles an hour, so that's good on those inbound lanes, giving you eyes on the ground on the 17 this morning. The Durango curve, you can see there's quite a bit of traffic. Also looking at those headlights further north of there, you can see things are getting pretty busy uh, just north of the stack. Up at Dunlap, it's not too bad, but just north of Dunlap, that's where the traffic really starts to pick up. And then a live view at Union Hills this morning. There was an earlier crash, but you can see traffic is moving right along. So for those dr desert drive times for you, it's a 20 minute ride now on the I-10 coming in from the West Valley. The 17 from the North Valley headed south is just a 10 minute drive. So you've got some extra time if you budget this morning. The 51 15 minutes to get you from the North Valley down to the mini stack and across the East Valley. It's a 20 minute ride on the 202 Santan from the 60 to the 10. Uh, the 51 we talked about and the US 60 if you're going from the loop 202 to the 10 westbound is about 15 minutes. Now let's get a check of that most accurate forecast from Allison Rodriguez. Allison, I haven't turned on my heater just yet, but I'm I've, I'm close. I've played I've played with it a little bit. I know. I feel you on that. I didn't have it on the freezing, but I didn't quite turn on the heater either. <laughs> and so uh, we're holding on, right? When we earn those sweaters, we're going to wear them. Here Here's a live look at your South Mountain camera as the sun making its way up. I just kind of love some of that glow that we have going on in the morning. Golden hour, right? Here's a look at your school drop off forecast. Maybe you're still taking the kids over the next couple of hours this morning, or they're maybe catching the bus. Here's a look at what you can expect. Temperatures are going to be a little bit cool. Probably going to want to wrap them up in a light sweater this morning as you send them off. We're going to see those temperatures stay in the low 60s through that 8 o'clock hour, 67 by 9 o'clock. Maybe they have a little bit of a later start, and so uh, things will start to warm up just a bit. Now, we're not talking warm, warm as we get into the next couple of hours, but really nice 70s to upper 70s uh, by lunchtime, and then we're going to climb into those mid 80s as we get into the afternoon. Those are going to be our daytime highs today with breezy conditions. Looking for those breezes here in the valley coming from the east, about 10 to 15 miles an hour, potential gusts up to 20 miles an hour. Here's a look at your temperatures right now across the state. We're down to freezing in Flagstaff. We're 24 degrees in the Grand Canyon, freezing in Window Rock and Heber, 30 in Shello, 40s in Payson. We're at 33 in Prescott with more 60s in Bullhead City and Lake Havasu City this morning as well. Now the afternoon is going to look pretty nice, upper 70s in spots like Bullhead City. We've got upper 60s in Sedona with mid to low 60s through Prescott and Payson. We've got mid to upper 50s through Shello and Heber, 51 in Flagstaff, 52 in the Grand Canyon, 59 in Page. Mid 80s, as I mentioned, for a daytime high today, so take a look at wherever you're going to be this this afternoon. Yeah, we're talking about five to six degrees below average. We'll take that for another day, right? And then as I quickly show you future cast here, tracking high pressure tomorrow, and then we're going to see a low move on in, drop our temperatures as we get into the beginning of next week. And as you just saw, another ridge of high pressure as we get into the middle end of next week. So we're keeping an eye on that. Your Phoenix seven day forecast looking like this here back into the 90s tomorrow and then 80s through the beginning of next week. And then we see those 90s again Thursday. You'll notice in our Flagstaff forecast temperatures are going to bump up a little bit this weekend into the 60s, but we look to stay dry. No rain or snow chances up north. So maybe if you want to get up there, really feel the fall and see those fall colors that's this weekend is going to be a great time to do that guys it's going to feel like winter at 28 <laughs> degrees well, overnight you, yeah <laughs>
but daytime <laughs> highs look great. All right, thank you, Allison. Hey, combining a murder mystery and the circus. Now, this is a pretty unique event. It's coming to the Valley this weekend. It's on our bulletin board. It's called Gaslight Circus. It's returning to Alwyn House in Phoenix tomorrow night with an all new production. It's called Step Right Up for Murder. This is a circus who done it, where the audience is part of the cast, and you get to help solve the clues throughout the performance. The show starts at 7 o'clock, and it is for all ages. The Allen House is on Roosevelt and 12th Street. Guests do have to show a proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. That's key. Tickets, though, they're just 10 bucks. For all of the details, you can head to GaslightCircus.com so you can solve a crime and witness some death-defying stunts. That's in today's bulletin board. Well, it is Friday, and we're going to help you make plans for the weekend. It's going to be nice out there. Why not? Yeah, our digital journalist, Josh Fergerio, has some ideas for you and this weekend's to do all in just 60 seconds. Foodies, listen up. It's Taste of the Fair at the Arizona State Fair today. From noon to 6 p.m., different food vendors will have $3 snacks, a little bit of savings there. Just remember, you still have to pay for general admission, rides, and games. Can't make it out there today? No worries, the fair is open all weekend. And make sure you look out for that watermelon Dole Whip taco. Looking to take some festive family fall photos? Head over to Rocker 7 Farms in Buckeye. This weekend, they're opening their sunflower and cotton fields. Thousands of sunflowers will provide stunning photo backdrops. They also have a small pumpkin patch and play area. Tickets are $6 per person or $25 for families up to five people. And in Avondale, Billy Moore Days is back. Named after the city's founder, the yearly fall festival will have a parade on Saturday, as well as a comedy show, horse demonstrations, and live music. Here's all the information you need to know for these events. Plus, you can find more at abc15.com slash things to do. Well, finding a way to deal with stress. Ahead at 623, a Valley woman creates a new device that's helping ease people's anxiety. Then protecting your kids at 635, why their social security numbers could be for sale. And at 647, only on ABC 15 mornings, we're gonna break down your super seven day forecast. Look at that beautiful sunrise over downtown Phoenix. We gotta get you ready for the weekend. You can do this right now. Get all the latest news, weather, and traffic by downloading our free ABC 15 app. All you have to do is use that camera on your phone to scan the QR code right there on your screen. An estimated 40 million people in the United States have some sort of anxiety. Although it is common, a study shows only 36% of those people actually get some type of treatment. A Valley woman saw the need and invented this little thing. It's a little device called Touchpoint. Now what she did not see coming, an even bigger need during the pandemic. When you talk to Cristiano, there is no question that's off limits. He's an open book about his life now and his life when he was a child. He tells me about when he was an infant. He was beaten so bad it changed his mobility for life. Now he's still battling anxiety, PTSD, and depression. Having an experience, you know, not feeling wanted or loved by the only people that were supposed to love and care for you. And so you grow up having that issue of if, you know, my own flesh and blood didn't want anything to do with me, then what's, you know, how, how any, is anyone actually going to love me? Still dealing with the emotional effects, he says these two little devices called touch points have helped him cope. I gave it a couple days and then the more it went went along, the more it started having a better effect and started working more and more on me. Touch Points was created by Valley businesswoman Vicki Mayo, who developed it to help her little girl with nightmares. Now it's helping people deal with life. People don't realize stress is silently killing us. Your body can't go on and absorb all that bodily tension, you know, every day. Touch Points delivers alternating vibrations to each side of the body. Vicki says it works along the lines of EMDR, or eye movement desensitization and reprocessing therapy, which is used to treat PTSD. While EMDR helps the brain process past trauma, she says the alternating vibrations on each side of the body helps the brain process current anxiety or stressful situations. The demand is huge right now. I mean, people need help. And when you can't get to a therapist and your EAP only program only gives you three sessions or five sessions, you know, what are you supposed to do? 
Well, Vicki says recently they've seen a massive influx of people buying the device, trying to cope with the stressors people they've really never had to deal with. She says they sold six months worth in just one month. That's incredible, and it says so much about where we are right now. Yeah. Wow. It is the final day of Hispanic Heritage Month, and First Bank wants to celebrate with a fiesta, a party. Just head to the location there in Goodyear today for free foods, drinks, live music. This sounds like a great time. Festivities are running from 2 to 4 o'clock this afternoon. On Sunday, the Arizona Cardinals, they head to Cleveland to face off against the Browns, and hopefully they're going to keep their undefeated streak going. Well, yeah, I mean, Browns are looking pretty good this year. Uh, their QB, Miles Garrett, is hoping to scare off the competition with his Halloween decorations. Check it out. He put up gravestones with other names of quarterbacks, their numbers, <laughs> the helmets. This is pretty clever. Of course, we had to see if Kyler Murray was there, and he's right there in the middle. We know you're coming for us, but it's okay. We got this. 6.30 in that half hour, we're about four minutes away from this. The struggle of being single. If you need a date for a wedding, hey, Tinder, they're ready to help. Plus, new this morning, small businesses needing help after wildfires or floods, they're now going to have access to funding through the state of Arizona. Hey, no spiders this time, but we're acting like mad scientists here at the Science Center. We'll do some experiments coming up. Uh, it's going to be a good weekend to get out there. Take a look. Temps are warming up a little bit tomorrow. We're back in the 80s Sunday. We are tracking some breezes today as well. We'll go over that next.